My dear people of Kaduna State, it is fitting and proper that I begin this address by paying tribute to the good people of Kaduna State. Amidst considerable danger and uncertainty created by the arrival of a new virus, the people of our state have in the main understood and supported the firm measures the state government took to protect them from COVID-19. Our people have made immense sacrifices in the last two and a half months as containment measures against COVID-19 were implemented. Your government acknowledges the perseverance of the vast majority of our people who have endured inconveniences and several challenges in this period. I urge you all to regard this as part of our contribution to protecting public health and saving lives in the dangerous circumstances created by a new, deadly and highly infectious virus. Your government had no option but to take decisive action at the end of March 2020 to enable us to protect our people and save lives. As COVID-19 wreaked havoc across the world, causing disruptions, sickness and death, even in advanced countries, and almost overwhelming their health systems, we could not just wait and do nothing. In March 2020, it was clear to us that the virus was going to spread across the country, having landed in Lagos. We had to act to protect people from catching the virus as we prepared our health system to provide treatment and care to those who may get infected. Therefore, the Kaduna State Government started raising awareness about the virus and alerting our citizenry to the dangers ahead. We recognized the imperative of collaboration and sought to galvanize a coordinated response by states in the northwest and north central subregions. We are convinced that if the states in the regions worked together, we would collectively improve the chances to save lives. At a meeting in Kaduna on 18th March 2020, Northwest governors together with the governors of Kwara and Niger states agreed to close all schools in our state starting from Monday 23rd March 2020 to prohibit large gatherings until further notice and launch an aggressive public health awareness campaigns to encourage citizens to practice personal hygiene, including hand washing. The Kaduna state government followed up the school closures by directing civil servants from grade level 14 and below to work from home. We set up the state task force on COVID-19 chaired by our able deputy governor, Dr. Hadiza Sabwa Balarebe, with membership drawn from across the executive and legislative arms of government. The task force considered the developments and proposed further drastic preventive measures to contain the spread of the virus. On 26 March 2020, the state government accepted the recommendations and invoked the Constitution, the Quarantine Act, and the Kaduna State Public Health Law to impose the quarantine regulations on the state for 30 days in the first instance. Under the quarantine order, the movement of persons and vehicles were, were restricted, except for essential goods and services. Offices, businesses, schools, places of worship, restaurants, and event centers were closed down. This was intended to prevent the large gatherings that are known to rapidly spread the virus. We eventually closed down all major markets when it became clear that large gatherings in the markets became uncontrollable. We replaced them with temporary neighborhood markets in our schools and other public facilities. The federal government also prohibited interstate travel and closed state boundaries to unauthorized and non-essential traffic. On the 26th of April, 2020, the state government felt compelled by the rising infections in neighboring states in particular to extend the quarantine order for another 30 days. But we also tasked a committee of senior officials to begin planning post-lockdown scenarios for the state. Based on the report of that committee, the extension of the quarantine order announced on the 26th of May 2020 was limited to two weeks, along with the gradual opening of more social and economic sectors of the state. As the two-week extension expires today, I wish to tell citizens of Kaduna State that your sacrifices have not been in vain. Your compliance with the quarantine order has helped ensure that our state has been spared the hundreds of unexplained deaths recorded in other states in the containment of COVID-19. For this, I thank you. 
and pray Almighty God to bless you, our state, and our country. Enforcing the quarantine order allowed us, to, allowed us the needed time to improve the readiness of our health system and prevent it from being overwhelmed by an early wave of huge infections. Our state health system is certainly stronger position now than it was three months ago. With the support of the Nigerian Center for Disease Control and our development partners, the State Ministry of Health has enhanced its capacity for robust tracing of contacts, testing of suspected cases, and treatment of all infected persons. Treatment capacity has been expanded to 150 beds from the initial 16 beds at the Infectious Diseases Center that we inherited, which we also upgraded and renovated. In a few days, 70 more beds will become available in two centers across the state. The state government retrofitted two hotels into temporary isolation centers and commenced the construction of a new 136-bed infectious diseases treatment center, which is expected to be completed by the end of this month of June. In addition, our team is working to provide 20 to 30 beds standalone infectious diseases treatment centers in every general hospital in our state that has the space to accommodate it. Testing capacity has also increased. From having no testing laboratory or center in March, Kaduna State now has three NCDC accredited centers. We have received one mobile testing vehicle from USAID, which has multiplied our ability to do random testing in communities. Recently, the state government imported 9,800 testing keys for our gene expert machines that are already installed in our health facilities, including the Yusuf Donzo Hospital, Kaduna. These kits enable us to use the 8 gen ex expert machines in our government hospitals to test samples collected by our health centers and they have already been validated. Our goal is to test at least 50,000 residents within the next one month to provide the state government reliable data on COVID-19 infections in the state apart from treatment of everyone that is infected. In this regard, we are actively searching the world market to procure more test kits. As at Monday, 8th June 2020, Kaduna State has the following COVID-19 status. Number of tests conducted, 2,895. Total infections, 363. That means 12.5% of the total tested are infected. One out of eight people tested are infected. We've discharged 210 people, which is 58% of all those infected. The contacts of the infected persons have been traced. We have traced 1,447 contacts of infected persons, out of whom 111 were tested and became positive. That is 8% infection rate. We've line listed 1,147 contacts for follow-up, and out of this, 626 have been cleared after being in isolation for 14 days without any infections. This is 43% of those. And then 821 persons are still under follow-up. That is about 57% of them are under self-isolation and being followed up. I'm sad to announce that so far we have recorded 11 deaths arising from complications of COVID-19 in the state. Two of the deaths are fatalities that arose after admission to the isolation center, and they died after their samples were taken. All the others had their samples taken after they died. In essence, they came with advanced symptoms, and before they could be treated, they died. Seven of the deaths were in patients older than 65. Two were aged above 80. All the old persons we lost presented their symptoms very late, came to the treatment center when the disease had advanced, and some had underlying causes, such as diabetes, hypertension, bronchitis, and cancer. So I can say that so far, only two patients who tested positive and were admitted to a treatment center, died. One of them was over 80 years old. The point here, citizens of Kaduna State, is that our Ministry of Health and our health, our health institutions 
have a very high success rate in treating this disease. So I call on all citizens of Kaduna State to come forward if they have any symptoms. Even if you don't have symptoms at all, if you've been in contact with someone with the disease, please come forward to be tested. Because once you're tested and we know in good time, there is an extremely high chance, 99% chance, that you'll be treated and you'll be well. I am a living example of that. And I thank our Ministry of Health and its workers for their professionalism in treating me and all the others. So far, COVID-19 infections have been recorded in a total of 47 wards out of 255 wards in our state and spread across 10 out of 23 local government areas of the state. The local government areas are Chukun, Giwa, Igabi, Jama'a, Kaduna North, Kaduna South, Makarifi, Sabongari, Soba, and Zaria. 74% of the cases are in four local governments. Kaduna North, Igabi, largely due to the 67 Almajiris from Kanu that were camped in, in Igabi local government, Zaria local government, and Chukun local governments, followed closely by Sabongari and Kaduna South with 14% of the cases. Chukun has eight, while Kaduna North and Zaria have seven each of the 47 affected wards. The highest number of infections has been in the 15 to 19 years age range, but this is because of the number of al from Kano that tested positive, all 67 of them. Apart from that demographic, the next group that is the second highest in infections are those aged between 25 and 29 because of their tendency to move around and mix a lot and disobey the quarantine orders. The Kaduna State Government commiserates with the families of the fatalities of COVID-19 and wishes the patients under treatment speedy recovery. We'll continue to work to protect our people from getting infected and will aggressively trace all contacts and test them and treat those who turn out to be positive. Thus far, state government agencies have adapted admirably to the challenges of containing COVID-19. Our healthcare workers have demonstrated the professionalism and potential of the public health system in Kaduna State. And I have personally attested to that as a COVID-19 survivor. Regrettably, certain, certain persons seem determined to sully all the goodwill the hard work of our health workers has attracted by the untimely threat of a strike action amidst a pandemic. The reckless action is a clear violation of the Hippocratic Oath, the Trade Union Essential Services Act, and our public service rules. With regards to the education sector, our team has worked to meet the needs of learners who have had the school term truncated by the imposition of quarantine. Lessons have been delivered on radio and television. Our tertiary institutions are also set to begin delivering lectures online to ensure the impact of the pandemic on education is minimized. Markets are significant sources of spread for COVID-19 infections. Accordingly, the officials of Kaduna Markets Development Company have managed the orderly and safe operations of temporary neighborhood markets with proper demarcation of stall space for physical distancing and the provision of canopies for the traders. Government has directed all local government chairmen to replicate this by closing all central markets in all the local governments and setting up temporary markets in public facilities in their areas that comply with social distancing requirements. Your government recognizes that about 60% of economic activities are informal and that our population has a large percentage of unemployed and underemployed youths. For these reasons, as part of the, of the partial lockdown, the state government took into account the need to support poor and vulnerable persons. These are persons who are unable to go out daily to earn a living and therefore are unlikely to be able 
to easily cope with the loss of livelihoods occasioned by this lockdown. The government therefore decided to provide food and other necessities to support such affected persons. The first round was conducted in the nine urban local government areas in Kaduna State. The weaknesses identified in that round were corrected in the second phase which reached 14 local government areas. The government is planning a third and final round of food distribution for all the 23 local government areas targeting those that are vulnerable. Everyone that works for the Kaduna State government has so far made two rounds of contributions to the funding of this support from our salaries and allowances. The state government has also received donations in cash and kind from many companies, development partners and individuals. We express a preference for donations in kind and we have received a variety of support from food to ambulance to medical equipment. Cash balance in the state COVID-19 donations account stands at 1.35 billion naira, which will be published, accounted for, and audited for transparency and full disclosure. We are grateful to all the donors, including the Kaduna State public servants. Citizens of Kaduna State, COVID-19 remains a highly infectious and dangerous disease. This virus is not likely to be comprehensively defeated until a vaccine and treatment are developed. While we await scientific breakthroughs, we must find ways to ensure public safety while en enabling the pursuit of livelihoods. Therefore, more socioeconomic sectors of society will need to be opened up from tomorrow. To open up safely and sustainably, every citizen must take the lead in protecting themselves and their families. Personal responsibility is now the only way forward and we rely on people to wear face masks, observe physical distancing, wash hands regularly with soap and water, avoid large gatherings of more than 20 persons, stay at home unless absolutely necessary, to and to eat foods that help boost immunity. The state government has done its best to ensure that COVID-19 has not resulted in mass sickness and deaths. We again apologize for the inconvenience suffered by all during the past 75 days of partial lockdown. The next step of staying safe while pursuing socioeconomic activity is strictly in the hands of each individual in the state. While we require individual citizens to practice personal responsibility, the places where they work, worship or shop and the vehicles in which they travel must also protect their health and safety. This requires that all sectors of society understand and discharge their responsibility for safe reopening, including the specific steps they are required to take. To promote this wide understanding, our officials undertook consultations with several stakeholders in the last two weeks on the conditions and protocols for the safe reopening of Kaduna State across all sectors. The state government submitted the draft guidelines developed by our officials for debate at the consultation meetings and we have considered all the contributions, suggestions and feedback received from the stakeholders in concluding the detailed reopening protocols being published and gazetted for each sector. We thank the stakeholders for their participation and contributions. We welcome the undertaking by stakeholders to comply with the guidelines and the, and the protocols and the government will be holding them to their promise. In fact, any facility or sector that generally violates the guidelines will be closed down under the quarantine order number two of June 2020 that I will sign today for immediate gazetting. My dear people of Kaduna State, I'm pleased to proclaim that under the powers vested in me by section 45 of the constitution, the quarantine act, the public health law of Kaduna State, and the infectious disease regulations issued pursuant to this. The state government hereby makes the following announcements as part of quarantine order number two of 2020. As from tomorrow, Wednesday, 10th of June, 2020, the quarantine order is amended to permit a significant reopening of Kaduna State. Subject to compliance with safe reopening protocols, the following measures will be in place in the first instance until the 30th of June 2020, subject to amendment, extension, 
or renewal as considered necessary. Number one, restriction of intrastate movement is lifted subject to a nighttime curfew of 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Number two, businesses can reopen subject to the provision of thermometers for temperature checks, sanitizers or hand washing equipment, and physical distancing measures within all facilities. Working hours will be from 9 a.m. in the morning to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Three, church services are allowed only on Sundays and mosques are allowed to conduct only Friday Jumaat services for the time being subject to compliance with the safety stipulations above. Number three, transport operators must reduce capacity to not more than two passengers per row and not more than 50% of bus capacity. Supermarkets and providers of personal services such as hairdressing and barbing saloons can reopen subject to satisfying health protocols. Hotels can fully reopen with their restaurants and bars offering only room service. Restaurants may, may reopen after decontamination, but are still restricted to take away services only. Public servants will be summoned back to work in phases to be announced by the head of civil service of Kaduna State. At this stage of COVID-19 containment, it is still considered unsafe for markets and schools to reopen and will keep engaging with the relevant stakeholders on the matter to determine the appropriate timing and conditions precedent for the reopening of markets and schools. We urge citizens to take responsibility and comply with these measures. This relaxation will be reversed in the event of a spike in COVID-19 infections or unsatisfactory compliance levels with the conditions and total quarantine reimposed to preserve health and protect lives. As we further open up Kaduna State, our officials will continue to control border boundaries to reduce unauthorized interstate travel. Within the state, security checkpoints will be allowed only to enforce compliance with nighttime curfews. Daytime checkpoints are not allowed. During the day, any violations of the adjusted quarantine order, like failure to wear face masks, etc., will be enforced by Operation Yaki, Castellia, the Vigilance Service, and our mobile courts. COVID-19 has exposed several weaknesses in our public service and health systems and that we will do our utmost to remedy. The pandemic provides a unique opportunity to strengthen our public health systems. We are therefore aggressively investing more in health infrastructure and in expanding access to virtual medicine. Our dear citizens, the education sector and the public service require reliable digital infrastructure to enable public servants to do a lot more work remotely and educate online. Therefore, we'll accelerate investments to close any GSM service gaps and upgrade and extend 4G footprint throughout the state. We'll support our farmers and the business community to take full advantage of fiscal stimulus opportunities embedded in the Federal Government Economic Sustainability Plan to maintain and expand employment. Major lessons learned from this pandemic will be incomplete without a resolve to develop a sustainable social safety net for the poor and the vulnerable. The continued contribution of public servants' pay and funds from private donations to purchase food and other palliatives is not a sustainable way to support the poorest. We have secured the support of our development partners and donors to work on developing a viable social safety net as a priority that will take care of the poorest in Kaduna State. We'll continue to implement the policy of repatriating al Majere back to their parents to afford them due care and the right to free education. This is an important step in complying with our state's child welfare and protection law. We do not regard modern education and Quranic education as mutually exclusive. A child can get both without being abandoned by their parents like leading to child abuse, mistreatment, and an uncertain future. Let me use my privileged position of being a COVID-19 survivor to appeal to our citizens age 50 and above to take due care to avoid getting infected. COVID-19 can kill anybody, but it is especially lethal to older people like me. As we open up, we advise older people to stay home as much as possible and avoid condolence visits and attending congregational prayers. 
Older people above 50 years should avoid receiving visitors. If you must receive, please wear face mask and stay two meters apart from your visitors. Younger people that may be infected that are showing no signs of the disease can easily infect older people and it may lead to your death. Fellow citizens, let us protect each other from COVID-19 by observing health guidelines. As we open up our state, let us make it a safe moment by committing to personal responsibility. Let us honor the sacrifices that have been made to ensure that this opening up supports the pursuit of livelihoods without risking widespread infection, illnesses, and death. You have done it for more than 10 weeks under partial lockdown. Let us show that we can stay safe in relaxed conditions. In conclusion, our dear citizens of Kaduna State, your government has done all it can to protect you so far. We have been maligned and abused by many that are simply ignorant of the dangers of COVID-19. Others that know better are driven by political considerations, envy and even internal sabotage by persons within our government and massive failure of security agencies. As a government, we are grateful that our COVID-19 related deaths are low relative to other states. The rest of the journey to stay safe from COVID-19 is now up to you. Every citizen of Kaduna State must now take personal responsibility to be safe and to keep their families safe. I thank you once more for your patience, cooperation, and understanding. For the umpteenth time, we apologize for the, ne for the necessary inconvenience that citizens have suffered over the last two and a half months. We do not take your understanding and support for granted. We'll continue to serve you with all our energy and our intellect, and we'll not let you down. Thank you for listening. God bless Kaduna State. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.